Hey, hi, Nishant. How are you doing, man? Hey, Rishi. I'm doing really well. Thanks a lot for having me. I just want to give a quick background introduction to the viewers who are watching this today. He's a part of Abundance Connect Networking Group also. His background is in finance. And uh, although he has a, a degree in CA, but he, he focuses on accounting and financial solutions and services. And the key takeaway for me is that the CAs that I've met in the past, they may not be as willing to look at alternative cloud-based solutions to manage their accounting and finance, very tech savvy in many areas. And so to have a finance guy that is tech savvy and is happy to accommodate and adjust your needs, because we as a tech company, we like cloud and stuff like that. So for, for me to find Nishant, who's like, yeah, yeah, cloud is the way forward. Like what? You're an accounts finance guy and you're telling me you're in for cloud and you're happy to switch to cloud. And this is the reason I wanted to talk to him. And I think you guys should reach out to him once you finish hearing his response. I already started working with him and I think I will get more and more of my work sent to him for anything related to my money situation. I see the value and importance of having somebody like Nishan for small companies, at least like mine, where we are absolutely out to lunch. We're clueless about how to manage all of that stuff. So let, that's just a quick background about my interaction with Nishant and I'm looking forward to working with him a lot more. Nishant, what inspired you to start this business with you? So go for it. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Rishi. My name is Nishant and I'm a chartered accountant. I've worked for five years as a consultant, as a techno finance sort of consultant at big companies like PwC and Deloitte. Essentially, I have total six years of experience now. I started my career as like a proper accountant back in 2015, worked as a as an intern at an accounting firm for three years, worked for PwC for three years before moving to Amsterdam to work for Deloitte. So recently uh, returned to India to launch my own startup. That's that's a little bit about me. So welcome back to India and stay in India and help us all in India and make it big. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. So if you can share with people, what are the specific skills or expertise that you bring setting you apart from the other people in the same? Talk to us about that. When you hear the word accounting or accountant, I think the first thing that comes, the kind of picture that I can imagine in my head would be uh, usually, right? A rundown kind of building and like a small office with, let's say, 15, 20 people working in it. Lots of computers. Some of them might even have outdated operating systems on them. And lots of physical files, lots of physical stuff. But that's something that we are out there to change. Because I'm a firm believer in technology, specifically in AI, machine learning, and other kinds of automation. And that's the reason after working for three years as an intern at like a conventional accounting firm, which pretty much mirrors the kind of image that I just painted for, for you and your audience, I decided to move to PwC, where I worked as a technology slash finance consultant. So that's something that I believe is our USP because we believe in cloud-based accounting solutions. We believe in automation. We believe in using the power of technology to improve your planning budgeting, to improve your financial consolidation, to improve your financial reporting. That's something that we are really proud of. Uh, we use ChatGPT a lot. They are very compliance focused. They are really focused more on income tax, GST, you know, accounting and things like that. Uh, but the problem there is you're always reacting, right? You're not being proactive. You look at your income tax returns at the end of the year. You essentially run your business for one whole year. A lot of the time, you don't even know what the state of your profit or your loss is. And then at the end of the year, your CA gives you a call and asks you for your bank statements or for your invoices. But then what happens throughout the year? You don't really have a proper picture in terms of where you are, what profits you made, what revenues you made, and things like that. So it's a very uh, reactive approach as opposed to being proactive. With us, what we really believe in is looking ahead to the future, planning well in advance, using technology to make sure that things are captured real time, using automation to make sure that things that take you 10 hours is going to take you as little as two hours. And maybe it might cost you a little less as well in the process. Essentially, our focus is more on growth. Our focus is on innovation and much less on compliance. We really are super, super invested in our clients. We uh, consider ourselves more as partners in our client success journeys and less as just external consultants who are 
to work for you for a certain period of time and then just move away. We believe in long-term relationships with our clients that translate into long-term benefits and synergies for us as well as for our clients. So just to sum it all up, technology and automation, high quality customer service and focus on growth rather than compliance. Those are the three kind of USPs that we believe in. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Very well put. Thank you so much. Are there any client success stories you can share with us? They've got like, you know, used your services and they've kind of got some. Can you talk a little bit about that? A wonderful project that we have been working on over the last uh, six months or so. So this is about a construction firm based in Mumbai. A mid-sized construction firm, recent turnover, but essentially operations that were really scattered and not a lot of integration between functions. So there were three functions primarily that were really bottlenecks for this particular organization. One is project management, the other one being procurement, and the third one being finance. So they were using Microsoft projects for their project management. They were using Tally for their accounting slash finance. And they were essentially relying on Excel-based spreadsheets for their procurement processes. That's something that we wanted to change. And there were some really big projects that were around the corner. And that's why the CEO of the company contacted us to have some kind of communication between those functions because there really wasn't any at the time we took over. That's when we introduced them to Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Uh, Business Central is a software that is uh, manufactured by Microsoft. And it is essentially meant for small and medium enterprises who want to streamline their operations. So we introduced them to Business Central and specifically the project management, procurement and finance functions of Business Central. The as a situation was not very great, but then by the time we were done with our work, essentially it was something as simple as someone from project management preparing the project plan in which they actually outline what tasks are involved in a particular project, in the implementation of a particular project. And while doing so, they also define their requirements in terms of raw materials, in terms of labor, etc. Then the procurement team takes over and understands the requirements, sees how feasible or how reasonable uh, the requirements are, prepares the purchase requisition to send to the finance team. The finance team then immediately understands what the requirements are, And when the vendors need to be paid off, they approve the vendor payment, the payments are made on time. Everything just works as a very well-oiled machine. So that's something we were able to achieve. By the time we were done with our job, uh, everything was really smooth. There was a lot of automation and we had 20% reduction in costs as well. It was really a very satisfactory project. The client really benefited from our services. Who would be the ideal fit for hiring you to get their job done? We work with clients of different sizes, uh, but definitely the services are very much B2B services. We don't deal with individual kind of consumers because, like I said, compliance is not something that we focus a lot on. The focus is really on helping startups and small and medium enterprises in their growth journeys. So in terms of the kind of clients we work with, we've worked with construction firms, we've worked with marketing agencies such as yourself as well. We are open to working with startups and small and medium enterprises of different sizes, but essentially the ideal kind of customer profile that we are looking at is someone who believes in technology, who understands that their current state of their processes is not okay, and who wants to change their finance processes, whether that is planning budgeting, whether that is cash flow management. Ticket sizes can range from anywhere between as low as 25,000 per month to as high as, let's say, 1 lakh or even more more than that per month. As you already know, we also do one-on-one consultation calls, which are usually like 2,500 per hour. And uh, that's something that we do so that we help our clients on an ad hoc basis with specific finance problems. So that's kind of our target audience. Great, great, great. Fabulous. Somebody who's, let's say, watching this video and they're considering your services. What would you say would be the number one reason they should choose you to work with as compared to other people? Honesty, honesty, honesty. A lot of the time, people only like to hear what they want to hear. And that's not something that's ideal from a finance perspective. Because as your finance partners, we are really supposed to show you the mirror and help you understand exactly where you're going wrong and exactly how things can be improved. So honesty and really being committed to your growth is something that, that we offer that probably are not, not a lot of others are able to. So in terms of your existing clients, what are some of the things they've shared with you that they are proud of? I had a conversation with one of our clients uh, recently where they were really appreciative of the kind of professionalism that we work with because I have worked for companies like PwC and Deloitte and I've worked in Amsterdam, which is really well known for innovation and technology 
and which is really like a hub for tech based startups uh, like for booking.com is one example that a lot of people are familiar with so i know what high quality systems and high quality processes are and i do understand that startups and smes don't necessarily get that so that's the that's a feedback that we get quite often from our clients like professionalism and really being able to communicate very well is something that our clients uh, have consistently pointed out how do you uh, maintain a strong relationship with your clients one of our usps is client service so obviously maintaining client relationships is super super important from our point of view as well what we believe in is having regular catch up calls where you can either indulge in some kind of small talk because that is also important from a relationship building point of view understanding what the client's pain points are understand what exactly their goals are uh, because a lot of the time people are not very mindful when they are offering their services it's just like you're going through the motions if you are really more mindful okay what exactly does the client want what went wrong in the last month or last quarter what exactly can we improve then that's something that helps us keeps our clients happy we regularly having catch up calls with our clients sending them emails sending them a hi on whatsapp every once in a while i think that is something that we use as strategies to have healthy and long term relationships with our clients what's the best way for them to reach out to you so we want to be as approachable as possible so i always share my personal whatsapp number with my clients so uh, you obviously already have it so uh, maybe if you can link it in the description or somewhere in the video that would be great Uh, so my personal whatsapp number is easily the best way to reach out to us either over whatsapp or over phone call we also have our website uh, www.acuitasinternational.com where you can get a really nice overview of our services and what we do and what we are all about there is also my personal linkedin page where i am pretty active i post on linkedin as well and i'm very uh, reachable on there as well so those are the kind of three platforms that uh, where you can reach out to us Yes, so I I have all three. Do uh, find the number, LinkedIn, and website so that you can reach out to Nishant. I have people who are watching these videos that may want to connect to you and work with you, collaborate with you, you know, join forces with you. Are there any opportunities that they can reach out to you for partnering with you? You and I actually connected on a good level at the Abundance Connect. So the Abundance Connect is obviously a really good platform. I am also an elite member on the Abundance Connect. group which means that i'm going to be there at, at every single meeting at least for the next 6 months so that's a really good platform where we can have a cup of coffee discuss what our unique strengths are how we can collaborate and things like that other than that also planning to host a webinar of my own uh, to kind of make people aware of the kind of unique problems that people face and how those can be solved with unique technology driven solutions i'm planning to have like a small audience to encourage good communication amongst the participants so that's another way for you to get to know me a bit more and we can always take it from there what is the final message you would like to leave with our listeners who might be considering yourselves so i think introspection is a key thing that i would like to focus on because a lot of the time you tend to do the same things the same old way and you're not really open to change looking inward and looking at your processes and constantly being on the lookout for improvements especially from a process and technology point of view is something that i would encourage every single person to do doesn't necessarily mean you need to hire me for for helping you out with that but as long as you are introspecting as long as you are looking inward i don't know maybe performing a review every once in a while and seeing what went right what went wrong and what's the path going forward i think that's something that's really important also technology is the future so always watch out for developments in the tech and ai space because there's a lot of interesting things going on there fabulous very nice thank you for that message and i just want to close out by saying you know it's been wonderful chatting with you number one it's been wonderful meeting you because i know we're going to do a lot of work in the future and three i also feel that this is probably going to be the first podcast that i'm going to do with you now which will be followed up with other podcasts in the future as we do more work with each other i think there will be more things that you can talk about which will make it very useful to put it on my podcast especially the abundance connect podcast so guys if you all are watching this and you like watching this so far who knows in a few months time there'll be a part 2 version of my conversation with nishan nishan is with a pleasure thank you so much thank you so much for having me and it was absolutely wonderful speaking with you thank you so